Hello everyone, let's look at the upcoming Libra New Moon. I'm going to share uh, the London chart with you. As you can see, uh, Sagittarius is rising, which is always good. And of course, uh, the Sun Moon conjunction is in, is in Libra, as it is a, a Libra New Moon. And it is conjunct, exactly conjunct Mars. Now let's talk a little bit about New Moons in general. And uh, new moons are always new beginnings, new chances, new potentials. Uh, everyone's, uh, there is one new moon and in every year you have 13 new moons actually. So um, you will have an extra new moon. Uh, it depends on uh, which, uh, which new moon is falling around the first uh, of the month. And unless it is February, you usually have another one by the end of the, the same month. And this is how, how we count new moons. Libra is the um, energy pattern that is, is directly opposite uh, Aries. And Aries is the go-getter. Aries is the, uh, the personification of the will how I want to exercise my will, how I want to be, how I want to act, how I want to uh, conduct things that are important to me. So it's the me, me, me sign. And opposite it, Libra is the only sign that is a, an object. It's not an animal, not a figure, not a mythic figure like uh, Sagittarius, the, the rising sign in our case, but an object. And it's the only sign where you can actually uh, determine things in an objective way. It is a very well known um, fact uh, if you consider how you look at things and how you interpret things, that only the things that you can actually acknowledge and understand will enter your system. The screening is very, uh, the filtering uh, process is very uh, uh, dense, so to speak. The, the, the broader your perspective in general, the more things you can detect, the more things you can understand. But if you have a relatively narrow scope, uh, you, won't, you won't even realize what's, what's out there. It's very interesting. I'm thinking of uh, preparing a little series on how the human mind works and what reality is and how we create our own realities. Uh, but if you consider the, uh, the sign Libra, that is probably the, uh, uh, the sign that is most uh, uh, relevant in, in the case of uh, how we can actually look at things objectively, how we can manage objectivity, because it, it is an it, uh, because it's an object. It's an air sign. It's a cardinal air sign, and that is the sign which is uh, symbolically uh, the descendant. Okay, if we we say that uh, the human. Uh, journey, the hero's journey starts with the, the sign Aries uh, and uh, ends with Pisces, then uh, Libra is right in the middle. So we went uh, halfway on the zodiac when we reach Libra, we have covered the, halfway, the distance halfway. And this is where we are able to step down and um, leave behind our own uh, willful personality in order to understand someone else. And if you come to think of it, relationships are about that. Relationship is always a screen where you are able to peek behind uh, and understand someone else's ideas, someone else's choices, someone else's uh, uh, main perspectives. Usually this is something that you are not able to do on your own because, you know, why would you? But if you are in love, or you are interested in someone else deeply, uh, especially uh, in a committed way, that all of a sudden the well-being, the, uh, uh, the the choices, uh, the the overall uh, uh, energy pattern of that other person will become very relevant, and so you are willing to step down and take a peek, take a look at this other person's uh, ideas and 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 desires and so on. And this is symbolized by Libra. And as I said, uh, new moons are always about new beginnings, new chances, new uh, uh, new energy is commencing and you can utilize it. In this case, Libra is definitely about relationships, partnerships, and uh, and and all sorts of uh, personal relationships in general. 
but mostly, of course, uh, romantic uh, in nature. And moss, which is the um, uh, which is in its detriment in Libra, is actually exactly conjunct the two luminaries, adding energy and and adding some sort of willpower to renew this energy, uh, which is definitely linked to partnerships. And of course, uh, the fact that in the London chart, uh, the South Node is rising and Venus is in the 12th. To me, as a karmic astrologer, it kind of suggests that you should look behind you because you might find love behind your back, so to speak, uh, in the hidden regions of your own um, life. And the South Node there means two things. Uh, in this uh, new energy pattern, someone from the past, either the karmic past or this life's past events may uh, materialize, may turn up in your life. In, uh, and then uh, you might you know, start a new relationship with him or her. But it also can mean that uh, this is uh, symbolically what you are bringing in uh, into this life, your, your energy pack, your survival kit. And for this new moon to function properly, if you are uh, situated in London or in England, uh, this is what you should do. You should look into your package, uh, so to speak, into your uh, karmic uh, experiences, into your instinctual uh, behavior patterns and knowledge, because they might help you achieve your goals. Uh, I did prepare two drawings for you. I actually prepared them for, for Budapest, Hungary, and I didn't have the time to redo them, but uh, you, all you need to do is just put the, um, actually it's, uh, the rising is around four degrees for London, but the, uh, the energy pattern is the same. So we are not going to look at houses because houses change uh, depending on where you are going to, to take a look at your new moon. But uh, here, here's, the, here, here's the complex planetary picture uh, around 12, 13 degrees. The sun moon mass conjunction is very relevant and very, um, very good for this energy, although, or even though, you have Chiron opposite the new moon. Now, oppositions are never nice. They are always signifying fights, strifes, uh, problems, uh, differences. Yes, but the, in this case, Chiron is retrograde in Aries. I, I think I already told you in one of the previous videos that uh, uh, Chiron has a very eccentric um, orbit, uh, very elliptical. And uh, so uh, otherwise, the, the way we, we can detect how long a, a planet or a celestial object is actually uh, transiting the sign is simply by taking the orbital period and dividing it by 12, and then you roughly get the, uh, the amount. Uh, it's not the case in, with, with Chiron, because uh, if you divide the 50, 51 year orbital period by 12, you get approximately five, five and a half years. And in Chiron's case, uh, for instance, uh, in Aries, it, uh, take, it takes 12 years. To, to cover uh, the distance of Aries for Chiron. So it's the longest uh, of the signs. No wonder, because if you can't come to think of it, anything associated uh, negatively with Aries, fire, wars, blood, suffering, pain, physical pain, uh, violence, destruction, uh, those are very inherent human uh, experiences and because they are always related to physical pain, enormous physical pain and agony. That is what actually gets uploaded in your psyche. And this is what you bring in. Uh, so everyone has uh, events like or experiences associated with these um, negative traits of Aries, especially wars and especially all kinds of physical suffering. So obviously it needs to transit this time the longest because it needs to uncover and give us the potential to heal. This new moon might just help us in this because the sun moon is shining onto Chiron. So with the oppositions that are linked to any of the luminaries, either of the luminaries, you have the added attraction of illumination. 
because whatever is opposite the sun will be completely highlighted and illuminated by the sun disk. And the moon adds uh, psychic energy and psychic insight uh, to, to the picture. And also the fact that Chiron is retrograde helps us to bring up really hidden traits and, and experiences and hidden wounds, but also the ability to heal from them. Uh, two, actually three other um, celestial objects are also, also entering the picture. Uh, Pallas Athena in Pisces uh, and Uranus in uh, Taurus are also retrograde. So they also give you this, uh, this inner perspective, this uh, kind of retrospective uh, understanding. And Ceres in Gemini, which is a very unusual place for, for Ceres. If, to me, it's quite interesting that Pulse Athena is more linked to the cerebral um, um, processes. So it's more linked to air thinking. And uh, Ceres, uh, which is the nurturing principle, is more linked to either water or, uh, or uh, earth. So, and, and they are, of course, in, in, in a square. Uh, uh, so they are they're actually not just contradicting each other because uh, Pallas Athena is not about nurturing. It's about, um, it's about wisdom. And Ceres, which is about nurturing, is in, a, in a, an air sign. So, but they are, so they are juxtaposed in their energy patterns and also fighting in a square. But of course, the whole thing is dissolved by the Sun, Moon, Mars conjunction, as Ceres is making a, a trine, actually helping uh, uh, the more relaxed, balanced uh, relationship processes by adding, uh, why, not wise, more like a, a committed, but at the same time, playful nurturing. And uh, the other uh, configuration, which is quite, uh, interesting as well. And I'm going to share the other drawing, which is just highlighting this finger of fate. Here I took out Chiron because unfortunately Chiron, uh, Chiron's placement is, is the, the opposition is, is there, but it is not closing the semi sextile so it's not going to be a boomerang. But it's not even, why, why did I say unfortunately? <laughs> it's actually fortunate because boomerangs are really, really, really uh, probably the most karmic uh, um, configuration. So here we have a perfect yod, at the apex of which you have the luminaries and the mass, so the triple conjunction. And this is more about, about how to renew your partnerships, your, your relationships wisely. So this is the, the yod in essence. Now, Tor, uh, uh, um, Uranus in Taurus obviously is about how to renew everything that is linked to Taurus. Um, it takes Uranus to make a complete turn around the sun uh, for 84 years. And after, you know, if you divide again roughly by 12, you get seven years. So it, it uh, spends approximately seven years in one sign. And in the world, what you can detect is that uh, Uranus tries to change, renew, but also in the process, this rubs completely whatever is associated with Uranus. Now, all the gender um, uh, things, all the, uh, the, uh, the issues around the gender identity that is very, very much linked to, to Uranus, all this complete craziness. Uh, I, 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 can, I, I only would like to, to add that you can, you can, look, you can uh, consider yourself whatever you want. You can act whatever you want. It's a free world. You are open and free to do and to outlive any of your sexual fantasies, but please leave alone the children. Okay, you have no, uh, you have nothing to do. You should nothing to do with children. Okay, allow children to grow up and allow them to choose whatever life they want, don't propagate uh, anything like this because you're poisoning the children. Whoever uh, uh, does this, I, I just can't, I, I just can't accept what is happening in, in the Western countries. Anyhow, so this is what Taurus does. And of course it disrupts our, our, our and tries to re renew our, our money um, issues as well. Uh, and it's retrograde. So actually now you have the, the added perspective to look inside and uncover stuff that 
you know, uh, was so far hidden. And the first Athena in, in Pisces gives you the perspective of wisdom to do it wisely. So this is a very interesting uh, new moon. Uh, if you look at the old um, traditional ruler, then Venus rules the moment, really, because uh, in comic astrology, we... Uh, we associate uh, Libra more with Transpluto, the energies of Transpluto, but both, uh, Tor both Taurus and Libra are ruled by Venus in, in the tradition. So this is, a, this is a definitely Venusian moment in many sense. And this is definitely about relationships, partnerships, renewal of your, your um, relationships in any form, but especially romantic ones. Happy new moon, everyone. Bye.